Managing authentication in Apex can be a headache. People say that it is best practice to store your credentials outside of Apex code, but how can developers fulfill this best practice? Enter named credentials. We can use named credentials to store and authenticate to third-party systems. Using named credentials, we can streamline the OAuth 2.0 workflow. I recently implemented named credentials for my QuickBooks Online to Salesforce integration for my open source package, Kimi. Named credentials are an essential part of getting this integration running as fast as possible. In this video, I will walk you through the five-step process to get OAuth 2.0 authentication working in Salesforce with named credentials. Before we jump into how to configure named credentials, I wanna talk about why they're so good. At the release of Summer 23, named credentials have been completely overhauled. The new architecture allows us to use the same credentials across many endpoints. We can use the new external credential to store data like the client ID and client secret. We can then attach name credentials to an external credential to share authentication details. The advantage of this new architecture is that you can share the authentication details for multiple base endpoints. And the reason why name credentials are so powerful is that they simplify storing credentials. They streamline how to implement the OAuth 2 workflow in Salesforce. Now that you understand what name credentials are, let's jump into the first step of configuring a name credential. Step one, configure custom metadata. To get started with name credential implementation, we need to create custom metadata. The auth provider uses custom metadata to store the credentials. For Kimi, we created a custom metadata type QB credential. In this case, these were the required fields. Additionally, Two QBO specific fields, Realm ID and Minor version, are created to store the related information. Step two, extending auth provider plugin class. The next step in the process is to create a class that extends the auth provider plugin class interface. This allows us to customize the logic for a specific OAuth 2.0 workflow and format the data the way that Salesforce needs. We can start in VS Code by creating a new class, QB auth provider. We can then extend auth.auth provider plugin class, create class variables to store the data, add a get custom metadata type getter method, implement the initiate method. This will allow us to get the data from the auth provider created in the Salesforce UI, implement the callback method to get the OAuth 2.0 access token. Inside this method, you can see that we set variables from our auth provider config from step one, build the body to the QBO spec, send the request to the QBO access token URL, parse the response into a custom class, then we finally return an auth.auth .auth provider token response. To implement the class to parse JSON, we can do so with this nested private class here, where each variable corresponds to a JSON element in the response. We then need to implement the optional refresh method. To do so, create a method like so, then get the required data from the auth provider, set the headers and authorization details, generate the body per the QBO specs, send the request to the token URL, parse the data with the private class created previously, return the data as an auth.oauth refresh result object. This will refresh the access token automatically if it is found stale. Keep in mind that this does not apply to the refresh token, which expires hourly if not used. Last, we need to implement the get user info method required for the auth provider plugin class. We can do so by returning an auth.userData object with dummy data. And of course, every Apex class is not complete without an accompanying test class. We can create a class, QB auth provider test, and add static variables used through various methods. Because we are making callouts to a third-party system, we want to create and mock our HTTP results. We can create a nested class, QB auth mock HTTP response generator that implements HTTP callout mock. We then implement the respond method that returns an HTTP response with the expected data. Additionally, we can use the test.set mock to route requests through the structure and avoid making HTTP callouts in our test code. Then we will want to add a helper method set up auth provider config to load the test data correctly, test the initiate method with the test initiate method by instantiating the QB auth provider, providing the necessary data for context and initializing the page. 
test the callback method with test handle callback by doing the same thing as before, and test the get user info method with the test get user info. Now that the custom auth provider plugin has been created, it's time to create the auth provider in the UI. By the way, do you like learning more about Salesforce? This whole channel is dedicated to sharing my experiences as a Salesforce consultant for free to the world. If you enjoy this content, pressing the subscribe button helps me continue to provide free Salesforce education. Step three, auth provider configuration. Inside setup, we can go to auth provider and configure the data with credentials from our integration. We can create a new auth provider with the following configuration. Keep in mind that the Realm ID is the company ID from QuickBooks. Execute registration can be any admin user. Once the record is saved, we can see a callback URL is generated. We can add this callback URL to our auth provider. Once all the data is in the auth provider, we can test the configuration using the test only initialization URL. Open this URL in a new tab to confirm that the process is working. If you are greeted with an XML file, you are on the right track. If there's an error, Confirm that all fields related to the integration are the correct values. Step four, set up the external credential. To create an external credential, go to setup, name credential. Find the external credentials tab. From here, create a new rec, call it QB external credential. Give it these settings and save. Additionally, we will need to grant access for end users to use this authorization method. This can be achieved through principles. On the external credential, create a new principle with the following details. This will allow us to sign access through profile or permission set for any user. Now we can authorize the access for the principal. Go to the submenu on the principal and press authenticate. This will run the OAuth 2.0 workflow and grant access to the third party system. To assign the access to users in a permission set, go to the desired permission set, find external credential principal access, add the external credential to the permission set, and save. Step five, configure the name credential. We can create the name credential that will authenticate to QBO. Apex code can use the information from the name credential to authenticate. Go to the named credential tab and create a new record with the following details. Notice the generate authorization header is false and allow formulas in HTTP header as true. And that's the basic setup to get named credentials working. Now, it's time to use name credentials in Apex. First, one of the things we did was store additional fields in the auth provider. So to get the extra information, we can query the metadata like so. To run a basic callout, we can set the endpoint of our HTTP request as the callout. We can also add additional text to specify an endpoint. With QBO, we need to use custom authentication header. We can do this with the allow formulas in HTTP header in the name credential configuration. To use the merge fields, perform the following. And that is everything you need to get name credentials working in Apex. Unfortunately, name credentials are not a one size fits all solution. While they are great for getting authentication going, some of the downsides of using them include needing to schedule jobs to refresh the refresh token. Name credentials do not work in managed package. With that being said, name credentials are a great way of moving credentials out of Apex. They simplify the OAuth 2.0 workflow and are an easy solution for integrating third-party data with Salesforce. If you enjoyed this content and want to learn more about Salesforce, I picked this video specifically for you to enjoy.